know, Disney. it is crazy depending upon what time of year. I mean, our audience is real estate agents. So, you know, last year it was, I don't know, I want to say it was an easy year. It was definitely a difficult year, but um, yeah. you knew you would, could be successful last year, right? So the, the battle between the years may have been for different reasons, but we are moving. There's a shift occurring, Ooh, right? The shift is crazy. There's, there is the, yeah, am I, I going to make it? I don't think it. it's a shift anymore. I think we just fell off the edge. Yeah. We it's did. Already yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to- Ooh. Remember, you, you use that term all the time, pivoting. I th- our market just pivoted or shifted, or I'm not sure what right. it did. But talking to an appraiser yesterday, and uh, he said that you know if if an appra- if you're getting about to get an a home appraised, hopefully they have enough inventory and the, uh, there are enough happenings in the last you know 30 days because it's so much different between just 30 60 days ago than what it was six months ago. If they're what's looking an appraisal? Months, yeah, what's <laughs> I mean, an appraisal? half of them are yeah. writing contracts you know without right. Yeah, so what absolutely. we're up against is a lot of battles, and that may sometimes put us in a situation where we start to question ourselves. Right? We let what's up here take a little bit more, more control, and so we're really excited to have you with us, Miss Lauren. Thank you so much. Why don't you share a little bit about yourself, your background? Um, you know, what is a mindset coach? You know, that's such a unique title. Well, shameless plug. I would I would probably hire a mindset coach before you hire any other type of coach because it really impacts everything, every area of life. But for me personally, um, grew up in St. Louis. This is my second time in Middle Tennessee. I do love it here. It's a great hub, and now I get to work from anywhere in the world, with anyone in the world, with a laptop, a phone, and an internet connection. Right. I am a former elementary school teacher. I've what an advantage to be a mindset coach, to be a former elementary school teacher. I said that's where she gets all of her patients, like because I couldn't do that. So. Don't worry, I only did it for three years. But, but we're, we're, we're all we're all just. I mean, my my wife accuses me all the time of just being a twelve year old, you know, in an adult body. You know, we're all kids to some degree, I think. You know, and and, and come back sometimes maybe to that kid like belief and faith, maybe. A, part of your part of your ingredients I don't know that's it's a big deal but you know if you think about the person who's operating on you or flying your plane or selling your house or taking care of your mortgage we are really all just programmed to a certain degree and most of that programming happened between the ages of zero to three years old and then you know the rest of the programming happened during early childhood. So you're not too far off with that, mm. with that guess. Wow. So I come to you and you are going to break down all the chaos in my mind to what's happening. How, how do you help me work through all that? Most of my clients come to me because they are two things. Number one, they are growth focused. They really want more and better out of life, but also it's because they feel stuck. And the reason that they feel stuck is because they can feel themselves bumping up into that old programming, which only got them this far. Mm. And they know there's more and there's better out there, but they just don't know how to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. Um, Or maybe they have gotten to higher and higher levels of success, but they don't have a transferable system for their team. They're, They're doing everything blindly. You know, they know that they can get success, but they don't necessarily know how to transfer that. And so that's Mm. why people end up working with me. I love that. You know, they they say fear can be the most paralyzing for for some of us. You know, Mm -hmm. we some of us may look like it comes natural, but, you know, some fear and that's all comes up through, you know, your mind and. You know, right. you say you want to do this, but you find yourself never taking that first step, right? right. So you're somebody that helps us take that first step? Right. We, when I work with, together with people, we first identify a really amazing goal. It's not any type of goal that you've ever thought of before. You know, some people know what they want to do, but they never bring that into their 3D world. You know, it's locked up inside of their hearts. Other people... Can you, can you, I'm sorry, can you describe what a goal might be just so we I've can had all people track sit with you. in front of me and tell me that they want to become an entrepreneur they're used to being a w2 employee or they want to write a book they've had this book in I their did. heart mm-hmm. for 40 50 years and they don't know how to do that or they're scared like you said mm-hmm. um, or they have this great invention they want to do or they want to do something philanthropic or they want you know kind of more of those intangible things like 
comfort, security, wealth, um, much better relationships. So I, the very first thing that we do when I work with my clients is help identify a true goal, not something, I know a lot of us you know, success-minded individuals have heard of SMART goals before. Most of those letters in that acronym are great. I take issue with the word attainable because if you think of the amazing things that have happened to humanity, you know, a, a human being being in flight, that was not an attainable goal. Us walking around and having a computer on our wrists or in our hands and we can connect with anyone in the world at any time of day, that was not an attainable goal. So we work together to figure out what is it that you really, really want. You don't have to know how to do it. You just have to want it. That's the only qualifying mm. factor. Wow. And then we go from there. Wow. I love that. You know, the want is so key. I think sometimes there's dreams and, you know, but the want of that dream, I think it's sometimes separate, you know, there's a lot of people there that want to be successful, but they don't want to work to get to the success. Right. Um, and they want to find that, you know, magic pill, which I still am, you know, when it comes to the, the, the weight concept or get fit, you know, concept. And, and a lot of people try to do that when it comes to sales, you know, and or um, the success that we have with real estate. I mean, the what got us here won't get us there. That's I keep right. saying that because we are in a different world, 2021. We thought we were in a different world in 2020. I mean, it's a totally different world now, right? Yeah. So even people that are out there listening, some people possibly had some traction last year, but then now they're they're backpedaling possibly because right. the shift has happened. Like you said, we've already jumped off the edge. Um, or there's other people that want to get into this business because we made it look so easy last year, right? <laughs> and so you see those people mm. possibly wanting to jump in, but they don't know if, you know. So um, share with us the top three things. You know, let's say we identify, and I love that because you're so true. People just kind of guess that they want to possibly, like you said, um, help a lot of families. Well, how many, mm -hmm. right? right? Like, do you want to go after making so much money? Money, helping so many families, or do you want to have so much um, pr production and volume? Right, like I try to say, pick, pick, pick a lane. Right, what, what are you going after? But how? What would you say to the our audience here? Maybe the top three things that so let's say we did pick a true goal. How do you now organize my thoughts to help me direct myself towards that goal? I mean, the goal has got to be mind blowing like something that scares you mm. that's that fear should be a part of the process Ooh, okay also so you keep circling back around to something really significant yeah this isn't about losing two pounds or right something like that this, this is, something is not really a five to ten percent increase over what you produced last year mm. this is something that you really want so whether it's helping families or earning money you need to be very specific, like you said, how many families, how much money. And then once you get that specific with it, and it's kind of scary, you need to tie some meaning to it. Um, you know, what are you gonna do with the money? Or what, what will you do with the ability to have the type of network where you've helped 100 families over the course of 52 weeks? You know, what will that, mean for you and your business for your own family um tie meaning to it you know if, if i'm earning seventy thousand dollars a month that means i can go on vacation whenever i want but then we need to also tie some emotion to that goal because the money in and of itself is not ever going to be the motivating factor it's how are you going to feel when you're earning that much money every single month or more um happiness, freedom, love, joy, you security. know, that, yeah, security, exactly. So, and then you always want to phrase that goal in the present tense. So I like to use the writing prompt of, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning $70,000 a month so I can go on vacation whenever I want, take my family with me, and I feel so happy and free. That is the perfect goal because it's mine, it belongs to me. I have no idea exactly how I'm going to do that. And I know it's going to be really amazing when that happens. But isn't having an idea how you're going to do that an important element so that it doesn't start working against you? Or is it just 
the power of that why or that power of that reason is going to when people you. set goals that they have either already done or they think they can do you know something that they can tinker with well if i reverse engineer this and i do this much more than i did last year there's really no inspiration in that it's got to come from your imagination mm -hmm. whatever that is um that's what gives it the juice Jason Hoover, you know, you know, you've done such an amazing job with our foundations class. And I know that you're, I think your first class is all about learning to go from the W2 mindset to the entrepreneur mindset. 1099. Uh, 1099 uh, mindset. Um, I mean, you yeah. know, entrepreneur mindset is where you're trying to go to. Right. So uh, I know you resonate with what she's talking about there. How deep do you go into that with our agents? Oh yeah, we dive deep uh, because we get into like the programming that she's talking about. Mm -hmm. We get into the um, uh, the results being results oriented, and we also uh, talk about the um, the pain points. You know, how bad does it hurt if you don't hit your goal? Because uh, that that fuels a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Is uh, it's great that you know, hey, you know, I get to go on vacation, get to do all this, but really, is it going to hurt hurt you? because we're the first ones to think, okay, well, uh, I didn't really need it, need 70,000. You know, I'm good with 20,000. Well, if it's impacting your kids, oh, wait a minute, that's a different story. You know, I've already promised my kids, hey, we're going to Disney World every single month. You know, I'm just throwing stuff sure. out here. But now my kids that say- That would be draining. That would be awful. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? One I'd, work, month. Every five I'd, work, years. I'd work hard to, get to avoid that. <laughs> but, but what if you tell your kids next month, sorry, I didn't, uh, I right. wasn't able to do it. Right. Your kids are, you know, going to call you a buzzkill. I had my son call me a buzzkill the other day. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, oh, he's oh, at oh, age. How old yeah, is he? 11, 11. Going on, uh, 18. Uh, oh, <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, so because oh I, I wouldn't let you let him watch TV anyway, we're getting sidetracked here. Um, uh, but yeah, so <laughs> definitely <laughs> we dive into all of that. Buzzkill. Um, you know, because we dive into the, uh, you know, the different, you know, we cover the, um, you know, the conscious, subconscious brains and uh, how much that impacts your programming. Bingo. Uh, because we're always focused on the conscious when we really need to be worried about our info diet. And I, I dive into their info diet. Uh, so yeah, I mean, ab absolutely. Uh, I'm resonating with the, all that she's saying here. Everything but, that he's saying is right. Yeah. The want though is so, it's like, you, do you really want it? You know, like that, that yeah. really, really, it's like, it's really like she was saying it. too. Right. And, you know, we always talk about money as our goal. Well, money is not the goal. I mean, we could, it's what the money we, can do. We, we can be, uh, you know, what is it? The ducks thing. What was that? What was that? Duck, we're, we're ducks. Duck tails. Okay. We could be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> quack quack. Oh, quack quack. Yeah. Uh, duck. Uh, Scro who is it? Uncle Uncle Scrooge. Uncle yeah. Scrooge. Yeah. Swimming in the uh, money. Swimming in the money. Yeah. Swimming what good is it? Right. What good is it to have the money if it, 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 your goals <laughs> are tied to what it does for you? Right. That's right. And um, so, I mean, again, you know, resonate exactly what she's saying because I mean, yeah, hey, great, you know, hundred thousand dollars. What does that mean? Because mm -hmm. every agent that comes in, so when we start talking about your goals, mm -hmm. I want to make a hundred thousand. Like, why? because I want to help people. Well, you can help people in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why a hundred? Because I never made a hundred. Okay. Is it going to hurt if you don't make a hundred? No. It's 90,000. Okay. Yeah. Then that's not a good goal for you. Sure. It's not going to get you. So Lauren, let's hurt. talk about that for mm -hmm. a second. I think he brings up a good point. Now mm -hmm. it seems like you're being, you're uh, putting it out there to be a more of a positive attraction. He's saying what's the consequence of not achieving that is more of a maybe fear driven, a, not a fear driven, but a consequence driven. So are you looking at both sides of that? Or are you mainly looking at the positive benefit of that rather than what's going to happen? What are the consequences if you don't achieve that goal? I mean, everything to me, fear of, is, fear of loss is one of the greatest motivators yeah, in the world. It, it, that's true. I just tend to keep it more on the positive side. I mean, I have said you know, I've, I've thrown out there the idea of the richest place in the world is a graveyard Yeah. because you take all these hopes and dreams with you and then you die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so that concept is there, but mm -hmm. when you're going after a goal and then you understand that fear is supposed to be part of the process and then you know what to do when you come up against that fear of, Oh no, I let my kids down or, oh, I didn't hit my goal, whatever it is, when you can work with the fear instead of run away from it all the time 
or use it as a, you know, a way to whip yourself. It's a motivator. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be, but mm -hmm. if you understand that, hey, once I move past this fear, everything I want is on the other side of that, mm -hmm. that's really powerful. Yeah, because everybody has different motivators, and uh, I'm sure you, you probably use DISC test and all of that. Uh, as much as I love DISC, um, the, 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 the second most important is the motivator uh, assessment, is what is motivating you to totally. be productive. Totally. And, um, you know, I always love to take the disc and the motivators together and combine that and see, okay, well, this is who you are and this is how you're going to be successful. Or, you know, what I love motivates that. You. So where do I take that class or that test? Um, I mean, I'm a reseller of it, but I'm sure there's other places. But I think the motivator test is huge. It's because, very huge. I mean, I'm motivated by money. I'm motivated by being number one. I'm motivated. Right. I'm not saying me, but I'm saying yeah, people you. could be. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> you know, but multiple different reasons of that motivation, which I think I, I love that. So because yeah. for me as a leader, I'm looking into disc tests. I go as far as animals. It's a little easier for me. You're, you're a lion, you're an otter, you're a golden retriever. And that's what I was going to ask you. It's interesting that you're bringing this up because I'm saying, what if that golden retriever, that personality, <laughs> <laughs> that personality is just passive. So it's like, ah, I didn't meet that goal. It's okay, right? Like that personality is one that's like, it's okay if you didn't return my phone right. call, right? Where I'm like, you know, like that we need to get on that, right? Type of thing. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Mine said more like a Way gun. Go, Jim. That was but, um, talk about that a little bit. So, cause there's a lot of different personalities. There know, are. And not everybody, even though you would think the salesperson would fit perfectly in this certain box, the Enneagram box would be this, right? Or that disc test, you should be blank or you should be a lion of, of, you know, the, um, the otter you would think. Um, but explain how that works. So your self image or your personality is tied to your results, period. However, you know, you can gain a lot from learning about your personality, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay stuck there. So I've known people who have come to me and, you know, they get part of the way through this and we're talking about, you know, their self image. Oh, I like myself the way I am. I'm, I'm great. And then they'll come back a few weeks later. I'm still not getting what I want. I think I need to work on my self image. Yes, you do. So you can look at other traits in people and see, okay, I'm not like that about that person. You don't have to become that person, but you can borrow some of those things that you admire in others, the things that help that person get closer to where you wanna yeah. be. You can always put that on, try it on for size and walk around with it. Mm -hmm. And I think too, you know, you have to go back to that person who's uh, the more passive person. Are they really that passive or did they really pick something mm -hmm. that they r truly wanted to go after? Someone challenged me a long time ago saying, why not? I mean, you've always made it here. Why can't you go there? Like what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a person that's stopping you? Is it your own, you know, mindset that's stopping you? What is stopping you? And when you take that, um, you break that down a little bit. It's really interesting because you're like, well, I've always dreamt to do that, but I just never gave myself permission or thought I was worthy enough mm. to allow myself the ability to go all the way, right? And so um, I think that's a big part of it too, giving yourself permission and understand you are worthy. Like who made so-and-so special enough to be the one that, you know, can, can do more, help more, close more. Mm -hmm. You know, we just talked about another listing agent. That individual made a choice to not even live here and take over this city, right? What made that person have any, who, they're not any different, possibly That's have right. a little bit more income, you know, or, or um, financial power behind something, but that doesn't mean we can't, you know, type of thing. So do you go, when you're talking about being very clear on your goal, do, and I love what you're speaking about it and speak in the present, and you do this great in the mornings, um, not that I'm hanging out with you in the morning. That's not a little weird, but um, you know what I'm saying. You, I it's know you. Should. Episode of the talk of music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You. I know you. Our Monday study. morning huddle call. Yes. No, your life, your savers. You talk about how you do your oh, yeah, morning routine. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know your affirmations. <laughs> yes. You know so. Silence. Affirmations. Yeah. 
you see visualization you, you yes. visual, like you have Exercise. to visualize yourself <laughs> yes <laughs> yes to word. all of that and that goes back to <laughs> uh, I'm just CA you never know what's going to come out of my mouth the it's loose funny. cannon on the team Lord I love it too many okay so go with that mm -hmm. you have a question I think that possibly we're going <laughs> to yeah. ask L Lauren are you I'm sorry go ahead um so out of curiosity, like uh, you, you've worked with some agents um, or are working with agents, what do you see are some of the common mindset issues with mm. them? Oh, that's a great question. A lot of times for anyone, it comes with a, I'm not good enough or I don't think I can, or, you know, just that, that sales mentality, plus you have everybody else around that person. Well, did you sell anything today? Mm. You know, that's such a huge thing. But internally, not a good place to be uh, flipping through either. If you got a lot of realtor friends, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just comparing. You yeah. know, so right. it's it's that concept of what really are you saying to yourself in your head? Let's mm -hmm. examine that. You know, but most common would be the I'm not worthy thing. And I don't think anybody wakes up and looks in the mirror and goes, I'm not worthy. But they're telling themselves <laughs> yeah, things that are similar to that throughout the day when they say, I can't, or it's never gonna happen for me, or you know, that person's special and I'm, I, I'll never be like that. 